Good afternoon and welcome to the latest webinar in the BioExcel webinar series. My name is Adam Carter and I will be um, hosting today's webinar. Um, for uh, So what I'll do is I'll spend a, a three or four minutes just giving you a quick introduction to BioExcel for those who are uh, not um, familiar with uh, the, the project and the centre and what we do, but uh, then I'll hand over to, to Michael for today's main presentation. So a very quick overview of what uh, BioExcel is doing, what we are. Um, we are a centre of excellence for computational biomolecular research. And there's kind of three pillars of what we are doing, three main aspects to what the centre does. Uh, the first one, uh, an important one, is excellence in biomolecular software. So one of the things the, the centre is doing is supporting some development work on popular biomolecular research codes that are being used widely in Europe at the moment, including uh, Gromax for molecular dynamic simulations, uh, Haddock for docking, uh, and uh, the, the QMMM interface in CPMD as well for quantum mechanical uh, calculations. Um, so we've got some of the core developers from these codes in the project, so we're able to um, uh, help develop these codes and to support them as well. Another aspect of the project is usability, uh, and an important aspect of the usability is uh, workflows. Uh, so we've been looking at various different workflow environments, uh, data integration aspects of that. Um, we've been involved in some development work in the common workflow language, for example, and we're also uh, making available building blocks that can be used in workflows uh, in things like uh, NIME, uh, Galaxy, and so on. Finally, uh, we also involved in various consultancy and training activities. We've uh, been we've running some summer schools and things like that. Um, and uh, also, if there are uh, if there are things that you would like to speak to us about in terms of working together in the future, um, you can contact us uh, at the address that uh, that you'll see at the end, um, or myself or Rossen, uh, and we can we can speak to you about how uh, BioExcel can can help you with the work that you are doing. So we'll, uh, we're happy to take questions uh, for today's webinar. That's uh, an important part of what we, we'd like to do. Um, and uh, But we'll leave those to the end, so it doesn't mean that we have to, to switch between uh, questions and the, the main presentation. So, uh, But you can record your questions at any time in the GoToWebinar control panel. There's a little questions tab. It'll look slightly different probably from what you can see in this picture here, but there's a questions tab at the side. If you type your question in there at the end, uh, if you've got a microphone, I will, will invite you to, to ask your question directly to the speaker. Um, otherwise, I can uh, read your question out and uh, the speaker will answer the question. So, yeah, you can type those in at any time and we'll take them at the end. So, today's presenter then is Michael Gecht. He's from the Max Planck Institute of Biophysics in Frankfurt. And um, Michael received his bachelor's and master's in biochemistry from Goethe University in Frankfurt. His master thesis addressed biological questions using combined theoretical and experimental approaches. So he's currently a PhD candidate in the theoretical biophysics department with um, Professor Gerard Hummer at the Max Planck Institute of Biophysics. And his main focus is the interaction between proteins and lipids uh, within biological membranes. Uh, Michael's also interested, interested in workflow automation, data visualization, and the modern web. So uh, I'm now going to hand over to Michael, and uh, he will be able to give the rest of today's presentation. So Michael, I'm just about to make you present uh, the presenter, and uh, you will be able to take it from here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks, Adam, for the introduction. My name is Michael. I'm a second year PhD student with Gerhard Hammer in the uh, Max Planck Institute of Biophysics in Frankfurt. And together with uh, two colleagues, Mark Siegel and uh, Max Linke, we've created a tool called MD Benchmark that helps you, helps us to scale molecular dynamic simulations across a different number of nodes on high performance clusters, such that we can uh, gauge how much performance we can get from those settings. So uh, I guess everyone listening is someone that uses high performance computing to do some kind of calculations. 
and uh, you are therefore aware that computing resources are not abundant and they are extremely expensive. Um, whereas looking at uh, different questions, for example, in our case, uh, at biological questions, we're um, interested in those, well, the questions we're interested in require lots of computational resources. So we, we have a problem here. We computational power is expensive, but we actually need lots of resources to do the calculations in a fast manner. So we, uh, everyone using computational resources should use those in an optimal way such that they can gain the most performance in a short amount of time while not wasting resources of their colleagues or the funds of their PI. And uh, another, another thing that one has to think about when doing uh, molecular dynamics calculations or computing in general is that running uh, any computations on a single node will give you a certain kind of performance and you can increase the number of nodes, the number of computers that your calculations are run on and uh, the performance will increase, but it will not continue increasing as you add more and more computational power, the performance will actually at some point start to degrade. So there's some, there's somewhere there's this optimal number of nodes that you're supposed to run your simulations or calculations on such that you are running those uh, optimally. So um, there are different factors that one can optimize in this region. Uh, one of them being the number of nodes, what I've uh, just, just explained to you. And there's also, you can either run your simulations, uh, your calculations only on CPUs, but you can also run them on GPUs, which will give you different performances depending on the software that you're using. But you could also try and optimize cluster specific settings like hyperthreading, MPI, OpenMP, or software specific settings. For example, if you're using Gromax, you could try to uh, do some optimization with PME and different kinds of products. So, and the tool and the benchmark, uh, the tool that we wrote, uh, tries to help you with a few of those things and so far, Looking, looking at a short list of things that one could optimize, and the benchmark helps you with the first two, which are the number of nodes. So it's um, the benchmark is able to scale your simulation uh, on a different number of nodes, on one node, two nodes, three, four, or five nodes, and also run those simulations either on CPUs or GPUs, so you can compare how uh, those work out. Uh, we haven't yet implemented the features of parameterizing any cluster or software specific things, but we're looking into that to have that in the future, uh, in future versions of MD Benchmark. So what is MD Benchmark? Uh, in brief, it's a command line interface, a CLI that we've written in Python. So it's a tool that you can use from your terminal, from your shell and call to, to create and uh, to create benchmarks. It's uh, open source, freely available on GitHub. We're using the uh, GNU public license. So if you're uh, up to, to doing any editing on the code, you're free to do so. Uh, we have uh, a big documentation online that tries to cover all usage patterns that we could think of, that we think are, are uh, valid use cases. But if you have specific use cases that are not covered by the documentation or by MD Benchmark, we're happy to receive any feedback. And uh, generally it's installable on all, on any computer that is running Python. So this should be basically every, I guess every high performance computing system should have Python installed. So you, you're free to install it there. What does this MD benchmark do now that I've talked about it for a bit? It boils down, currently it boils down to four different functions. First of all, you're given a system that you want to simulate, for example, some protein in a water box. Uh, in Gromex, you will have a TPR file, a run input file um, that uh, defines the whole system. And you can give that file to any benchmark and tell it to generate from this file, generate a bunch of different benchmarks on a uh, number of different nodes. So it should run the benchmark on one node and two nodes up to five or 10 nodes. And then you can also tell it to 
either run it on, on CPUs or on GPUs, and then you'll end up with like a variety of different benchmarks that will run on your queuing system. Uh, speaking of queuing systems, MD Benchmark is also able to, after the jobs were generated, MD Benchmark is able to submit those jobs to your queuing system. And here, we don't care which queuing system you use because MD Benchmark will try and figure out which one you're using. So if it's SunGrid Engine, SGE, uh, Slurm, uh, the Slurm Workload Manager, or the old IBM Load Leveler, your, uh, whatever you're using, MD Benchmark will figure it out and use the correct submission commands to submit those jobs for you. And after you've submitted the jobs, uh, you can actually immediately start looking at them with the analyze command, which will tell you which jobs are currently running, it, but, it also, but it also will go through the log files from your jobs and grab the performance that, for example, Gromix puts in there and in a nicely formatted way show you on this number of nodes with this number of CPUs, you got this performance. With GPUs, you got this performance. And from this table, you can then create a plot that you can use to compare in a very quick way to compare different benchmarks with different settings, maybe put it in some report in some ground application or just share with your colleagues. So one of those uh, plots, how one of those plots can look like, I'm showing on this slide. So basically a plot in our case is the performance uh, nanoseconds per day is a function of the number of nodes. And here I'm showing two different uh, parameters, either benchmarks running on CPUs, blue line, or benchmarks running on GPUs, orange line, and Going through the first two points, we have a fit that shows the optimal linear scaling that you would expect to get from those first two points. And we can clearly see that the benchmarks on CPUs manage to almost completely scale in a linear way up to 10 nodes while degrading some performance here, whereas um, benchmarks on GPUs uh, are optimal in the first few nodes, but quickly start to degrade performance as addition of more computational power does not yield any more performance in this case. So running on two to three nodes would give you the best performance in GPUs, whereas on CPUs, you could actually think about running them on seven nodes, which would give in this, in this simulation, give you almost 100 nanoseconds per day simulation time. So to get in the benchmark, you have, uh, there's a variety of ways, but the two most, I guess, most popular ways of installing, installing Python applications are through Python package managers. And uh, the two most used are PIP that accesses IPI, where, which you could use to install in the benchmark with the command pip install in the benchmark. And the other way that we highly recommend is if you're a user of the Anaconda distribution, that is a scientific distribution of Python, you could use Conda install and the benchmark providing the Conda Forge channel here for installation. Uh, we, we do have uh, documentation talking about all the different installations, so you don't have to write that down here. So um, installing the Python package, um, we think it's important that you isolate the installation of our package or of any other package from your system. So Python provides a few different ways of doing that. And in our documentation that you can, uh, the URL you can see here, it's uh, docs.ndbenchmark.org. You can find our documentation on the installation, all the usage. Basically what we're saying here is you should create an isolated Python environment where you install ND benchmark in which by itself will install all its dependencies independent of packages that are on your system. So it doesn't collide with your system in any way and will always function uh, as it should because it's in, it's in this isolated environment. So our documentation goes over the few steps that you have to take to uh, actually do the installation. Uh, in this case, you first create a virtual environment, a conda environment in this case, uh, with the command conda create minus n benchmark, 
where the name benchmark would be the name of the environment. And afterwards, after you've created the environment, you can install the package and the benchmark inside this very environment. And this will take a few minutes, depending on internet connection and your processor, whatever. And after some time, when installation has finished, you can activate this environment. And activation of this environment means that you, um, the Python interpreter, the Python program that you're calling is located in this isolated environment that you just set up and it's not the Python interpreter that is located on your system in any case. So you activate this environment and then you're able to use MD benchmark with its isolated dependencies. So doing that after activation of the environment with the command source activate benchmark, where benchmark again is the name of this environment, uh, you can just type in MD benchmark in your terminal and start using it. And um, now I'm going to quickly switch uh, the presentation to the terminal where I hope this is working. Yeah, okay, so I guess this is working now. So I uh, currently in the terminal that uh, where I have installed MD benchmark and I've already run the source activate MD benchmark command uh, and it shows me that I'm in the benchmark environment. So now I can just go ahead and run MD benchmark in this environment and I, without rendering any options, I will get the short help provided by MD benchmark showing the options that I, the commands and options that I can use to call it. So basically, if I don't give it anything, it will show this message that is also accessible with minus minus help. And uh, MD Benchmark provides you with four different commands, all of those that I've uh, just shown you before. So basically, you first generate a benchmark given some input file for Gromex, it's a TPR file with the generate command. After generating the systems, you would go ahead and submit those benchmarks to your queuing system with the submit command. After submission, you can do the analysis with the analyze command. And last but not least, after doing the analysis, you can, after retrieving the, the data, you can plot the data with the plot command. And so in the benchmark inside of this tool, the, the tool takes care of everything, everything that you need to know. And uh, just, so I'm going to clear this, uh, terminal window every now and then to to so I'm typing all the commands I'm going to type at the top so don't don't worry if, if everything disappears so um, every command that we are looking at every command that I just listed here in the board also provide a minus minus help option that lists options that you can use uh, that you can supply to the command for usage with it. And uh, it, uh, the, so the generate command has a somewhat lengthy help help text uh, talking about the different options, what you can, what, what they do and what, they, what they're what they used for. And then there's also a summary of all the options again in a tabular view with uh, the option name and the short description of the, what the option does. So, and to run, to run the generate command, you have to use three specific options in this case. First option would be the minus minus name option where you provide the name of your, for example, the TPR file. You uh, can use the minus minus module option, which would, uh, which, which, which waits for, uh, which expects uh, the name of the module that you're using. So it would be Chrome X and the version of the module. And then it, uh, it, it needs uh, the minus minus template um, option that is the job template that you submit to your queuing system that you're probably already using. And then all the other options are optional in a sense. So uh, running, running the generate command, you would always, uh, always generate benchmarks for CPUs but you could also supply the minus minus GPU option to run on GPUs. You can change the number of nodes that you run on. So by default, we generate a, number, a total of five uh, different benchmarks. So running on one node and two, three, four, and five nodes. And each of those benchmarks runs for 15 minutes. You can change all of those parameters. And we're going to, after talking about this, 
I'm going to show you how to do the actual generation. So now I'm in a folder with the file called mdtpr. This TPR file uh, users, Gromex users are familiar with, just defines your system, everything it needs, the topology of your system to run the simulation. And this is something that MD Benchmark needs to generate this, uh, to generate benchmarks. And for Gromex, it's the only file it needs. So I'm going to type in MD Benchmark generate minus minus aim and DTPR. Then I'm going to say I wanna uh, which module I'm going to use. And in this case, I want to use Gromex 2018.3. And I'm going to tell it that I want to use the template named Draco, which is the cluster that I know, that I'm on in this case. And running that command will give me a short summary of all the benchmarks that the system is going to create. And uh, it will also ask me whether I actually want to create those systems. So it gives me a short summary telling, saying that it's going to create the benchmarks for Gromex, but this version 2018 on one to five nodes uh, with a runtime of 15 minutes each with this template and it will not use GPUs. So it will only use CPUs. And I can decline the, so I can, and it will ask me what I, what I'm fine with that. And I can say yes or no. And here I'm going to say no, because I want to show a few more options before generating the benchmarks. So what we can do and what, what I think is pretty awesome, a uh, pretty awesome feature about MD Benchmark is um, if you, sometimes you mistype the module that you're looking for. So in this case, maybe you mistype and instead of typing 2018.3, you just type 201.3. And doing that, MD Benchmark will actually notice that your cluster does not have a module with that version. So not, does not have a Gromix version. Yeah, module with that version, but it will tell you which versions you actually have. And then those are the ones that you want, you can use. But if in any case, from a, um, MD Benchmark is wrong, you think that MD Benchmark is wrong, you can also tell it to skip the validation with the minus minus skip minus validation option that in the end will just ignore the validation completely. It will tell you that it's not doing any name validation for the module and then that it will use this module to generate benchmark. So from here on, you're on your own. If you wanna do that, that's fine. But we're just trying to help you not make mistakes in, in creating bench like thousands of benchmarks for a module that, that's not there at all. All right, so another thing that I want to show you is the fact that we can also generate benchmarks for GPUs, not only for CPUs. So I talked about if you don't supply any options, then MD Benchmark will only generate benchmarks for CPUs, but you can also tell it to generate benchmarks for GPUs with the minus minus GPU option. You can do so. And, oh, well, this, this I haven't thought about. So just fix the module name with the minus minus GPU option. You can do so, and then it will tell you that it's going to create twice the amount of systems, basically five benchmarks without GPUs and five benchmarks with GPUs, and again, ask you whether you want to do that. For the sake of presentation, we actually want to create 10, simulate, uh, 10 benchmarks with GPUs and 10 benchmarks with CPUs, so we're going to give MD Benchmark the option max nodes, which will tell, you, tell it from one to 10, generate a bunch of benchmarks. And we're going to check it out here. So the summary says it's going to do what we wanted. So it's going to create a total of 20 benchmarks. And uh, there's actually another option that it's very helpful with uh, the confirmation that you're getting here. Maybe you're, you don't want to have the confirmation and always want to confirm. You can just use the minus minus yes option to skip the confirmation and instead of having it here on top, you can just, with the minus minus yes option, you can just go ahead and have the benchmarks generated for you, which is pretty neat. So if you're doing some bash scripting, you can just use the minus minus yes option and there will be no prompts holding your scripts. All right, so, oh yeah, right. So um, now that I have generated the systems, I actually have a new folder inside of my previous folder. 
called Draco Gromex, Draco being the template that I used and Gromex being the ED engine. Inside of that, I have two more folders, one representing the version that we're going to run benchmarks without CPUs and the version that we're going to run benchmarks with CPUs. And if we look inside of that, we see that we have 10 different folders that represent each benchmark on a different number of nodes. So this would run on one node, and this would run on 10, and 2, and 3, and so etc. And looking in those folders, we have the TPR file that was copied there, and then a job file that is generated by MD Benchmark with the parameters that are needed to run the job. And if we uh, look at this file, if we have a look at this file, it basically just defines the name of the job, which by default is the name of the TPR file, uh, also the name of the log files that are produced by your queuing system. It tells the queuing system that, it, that we only want to run on one node, uh, how long we want to run on for 15 minutes, which module to load, and that it should call Gromix for this, for this benchmark. And basically that's it. So now that we have generated the systems, the benchmarks, we can actually go ahead and submit them. So using MD benchmark submits, we will again get a, get a nice formatted table that shows you, okay, I'm going to submit those jobs. Um, these are the exact same jobs that we just generated. And again, it will give you confirmation whether you actually want to submit those jobs or not. We're going to say no because again, just to showcase, it's possible to tell MD Benchmark minus minus yes to skip the confirmation and immediately submit all jobs that we want to have. And basically, these um, starting from this line, this is something that is generated by the cluster. So this is just the queuing system answering to the uh, QSUB SQ whatever command. And afterwards, MD Benchmark tells you everything was submitted. You can go ahead and analyze those jobs if you want to. And so looking, uh, I, well, I, I prepared a uh, state of jobs. So, so we don't want to wait for those jobs to finish because it will take a bit, at least 15 minutes. So I prepared a few, a few simulation, a few benchmarks to, to showcase how it would look like. So uh, think of, benchmarks that are currently running. So a few benchmarks have finished, but a few have not. And um, you want to check in with your current, with the jobs, how the performance is doing and what it, uh, how, how things are going. So you can just go ahead and in the same folder as you've been before, you just type in MD benchmark analyze. And doing so gives you, uh, again, a table with an overview of the simulations that that have been running, but now it gives you for every parameter that you've been using, it gives you a new line. So in this case, we have run the uh, all benchmarks in the same module, Gromex 2018.3, but on a different number of nodes with the same runtime, but either without or with CPUs on the same templates. And then from the log files, it also grabs the number of cores. So in, in, on this cluster, one node represents, well, has 32 cores, so two nodes have 64, et cetera. Uh, and then the third, the third column is the most interesting one for you, where it shows you the actual performance that you get uh, in, your, in each benchmark. And you see that from one node, you get 40 nanoseconds per day, two nodes give, give you 20, uh, 28, 45 on three nodes, et cetera. So it's, there's some linear scaling, as we've seen before in the same in, in this plot that I've shown you before. But what we can notice is that a few benchmarks for, on GPUs have question marks in them, and these question marks indicate that these simulations either have not, the these benchmarks have either not started yet or are still running in a sense. So there's no perform, no performance information that any benchmark can grab from those benchmarks, and you have to just wait for them to finish to get the actual information. So after waiting a long, like enough time for them to finish, we can have a look at the analysis function again. And it's, what it will show us now is that all the benchmarks have some performance 
values associated with them. So the missing values were filled in. And this is pretty nice. So we can now go ahead and generate, uh, if we, yeah, if we, if we look at the analyze function, we see that it actually has an option that allows us to save the outputs from the table in a CSV file, in a comma-separated value file. So let's do that. It's the minus minus save CSV option. So MD benchmark analyze save CSV. And I'm going to call it benchmark just for the sake of it, this presentation. And if we'll look in the folder, we have a new file called benchmark. And if we look at it, we see that here, here are the values that we just got from the simulations. Here are the performance values, number of nodes, et cetera. So given that we have those values, we can actually go ahead and do the plotting. So for the plotting, we need a CSV file. So you always have to generate this. And looking again, you can, if you're lost, if you don't have internet access, you can just use minus minus help to, to get the help for the actual commands, which again is a bit lengthy, explaining all the different options that you have. And here you can specify that you wanna uh, use a specific CSV file, how the name of your plot should be, how the format should be. So by default, we're going to generate a PG, but you can also specify PDF, SVG, PS, whatever you wanna have. And what's also possible, and this is one of the cooler features, I guess, you can filter your data by the parameters. So you could say, I only want to show modules of a specific Gromix version of a specific Nandy version. I only want to show a specific template. So if you have different simulations on different clusters, want to compare them, you maybe also want to only plot a specific cluster, you could do that. Or you could say, I only want to show CPU or GPU benchmarks. And there are a few more options here. And I'm going to showcase this by plotting uh, the benchmark CSV to a file. Oh, wow. So it's a minus minus CSV. And it will tell you it's plotting by default, it's plotting all the data, so all GPUs, all CPUs, it's plotting all host templates and it's plotting all modules. So this, this benchmark JPEG will be somewhat noisy and I'm going to share my screen so everyone can see what I'm seeing. So if I open this PNG file, I get the plot that I just basically showed you before in the presentation. So you get the same scaling for the CPUs and then, well, uh, another scaling for GPUs. But uh, what about, what if I'm annoyed by the, by the linear fit that we put in, put in the benchmarks? What if I don't want to have it? So in this case, we can just go ahead and from the, uh, the help function told us there's a no fit option. And uh, we, we can just use that as a, as a option to the a plot call. And if we, when we open the new benchmark PNG that was generated, we don't have any scaling. Uh, we don't have any linear fit anymore. So the plot is less noisy. If you want to have that, you can just do that. It's as easy as that. You can also go ahead and say, actually, I, I only want to see the scaling for the CPUs. So I'm going to say no GPUs. And I'm also going to say minus minus output name benchmark CPU.png. And it's now it's only plotting CPU data into this file. So now I can open that. And with the linear fits, I only have the CPU data in one plot. So you can customize your plots uh, to your likings as like uh, to, to whatever you want to have in a specific situation. You can combine different modules if you have them to, to compare benchmarks in a sensible way. All right. So now I need to change back to this. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I'm having some problems restarting the... Yeah. yeah I think it's quite legible, actually, from the slide. Um, yeah, all right. If it's not... Uh, if it's not no, it's, it's not... No, 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 it's, it's fine. All right. Cool, so we'll, we'll just do it this way. So, yeah. uh, if you, so, so I've been talking about uh, when you generate a, generate a benchmark, you can uh, supply the benchmark with the option template. And this template option will tell MD Benchmark to use a specific template that is customized for your high performance cluster. So, um, and inside of this, this template, there will be a few variables that MD Benchmark will replace with the values that the user provides in the options for generate, uh, which I'll come to in a second. And basically, there are different ways of, of providing those host templates, um, either system-wide if you're a system administrator for your high-performance cluster, or if you're just a user like I am. Uh, you, so, so if you're an administrator, you can provide, you can provide it in the uh, etc directory with where where the template would be my hpc and then uh, md benchmark generate minus minus template my hpc would be the call or you can as a user you can just create a folder in your home directory if your username is user uh, you can create a directory.config subdirectory and the benchmark and again put the same file in there and our documentation actually talks about uh, different uh, parameters that you can use for your for your system. So there are different a, a few different parameters that you can use. So the name of the TPR file is put into the into the system. There's a boolean whether you want to use GPUs or you want to use CPUs. Uh, we provide the module name, the number of nodes, and the time that you're run uh, that you're planning to run on. And basically. Everything that you're, everything that you're, uh, everything that the user, user supplies to the generate, we provide to the template, and MD Benchmark then replaces the variables in the template. So you can just customize everything that you need. So uh, going back to the terminal, yeah, cool. Um, I just want to showcase how this would look like. So um, I, again, I'm in the folder when I, where I want to generate a benchmark. And if we run MD benchmark, MD benchmark generates minus minus help, we get a help function that, well, we get the help text that will show me an option called list hosts. And this will show me all the available host templates on the cluster that MD benchmark is aware of that you can specify as a user. So I'm going to go ahead, generate, and use that option, minus minus host, list hosts. Is that, oh yeah, it's list hosts. MD Benchmark even tells you if you mistype a command. Uh, and then it tells you which hosts it has available. And in this case, MD Benchmark ships with three default templates, Cobra, Draco, and Hydra, which are uh, high performance clusters from the Max Planck Society. Uh, which we are using and just provide for us. Uh, but you can also specify uh, hosts for yourself. And I, I just uh, created a host file called webinar. And if we go into my into my directory of the, so here this is my user. Uh, then inside of my home directory, I have a config.config .config folder. And inside of that, I have the MD benchmark folder. And if we look inside of this folder, I have a webinar file. And if we look into the webinar file, basically what I've shown you uh, before, so the file that MD Benchmark will put into the folder for each benchmark, but with variables. And those variables are defined with double curly brackets and the variable name in the middle. And in this case, this would be the job name. Several times would just be the name of your TPR file for Chronix, the number of nodes, uh, the number of tasks per nodes that you want to use and try to use, and then different uh, different options like which module you want to use, uh, et cetera. And if we want to go ahead and use that, we can just do so. So in any benchmark, you can just type any benchmark generate minus minus name 
And the TPR minus minus module, we know that we have to use Scrum X 2018.3, and then we just type template webinar. And if we do so, we uh, MU benchmark again tells us what it's going to do, and it tells us that it's going to use the host template webinar for the creation of these benchmarks. Which so generating benchmark generating benchmarks with custom host templates works. And we have on our documentation page, we have a lengthy documentation of how to create benchmark, well, those host templates. We have examples for every, every queuing system that we support, SGE, Slurm, and low leveler, which you can use and customize for your needs with the variables in there, but you can just create a new one and reuse the variables. And uh, with this, I'd like to come to an end. All right. So where where do we where do we go from here? So far, MD benchmark uh, enables you to it enables you to generate benchmarks and scale your scale your simulations across a different number of nodes, and it allows you to try out your simulations on either CPUs or on GPUs. But we're interested in, uh, in the future, adding the features of parameterizing uh, the cluster-specific options. We would like to look at, we would like MD Benchmark in the end by itself to start looking at hyper-threading or whether changing uh, the numbers for MPI and OpenMP does anything. We'd also like to, uh, we'd also like MD Benchmark to, in the end, maybe start to optimize the PME or cutoff values uh, in Gromex, for example, which would be great. So it could by itself just run in the background of your cluster and try to find the uh, perfect parameters for your system such that it runs as fast as possible and uses as least, as, as least resources as possible. Uh, another thing that we think would be valuable for the, for the users of the tool would be some kind of Python API that would allow people writing their own scripts, uh, their own pipelines to just import MD Benchmark and call generate or submit for, from their own scripts without using the uh, command line interface in any way. So this would allow for people to create their own workflows without ever needing to use the terminal. And additionally, currently we support Gromex and NAMD benchmark, well, benchmarks with Gromex and NAMD. Uh, if anyone out there is using Ember and or Labs, actively using it and could help with uh, the specific details of what we would need to get it running on that, we would be uh, uh, grateful to have any input from the community so that we can extend the functionality to other systems. Um, to finish my talk, I want to acknowledge my PI, PI Gerhard Tammer uh, in the middle here, who uh, allows us to work on this project in our spare time between doing science. Um, Jürgen Köfinger, who gave uh, helpful input into the project and for the helpful discussions. Max Linke, who uh, actually started the project after having to do benchmarks with uh, best scripts. And Mark Siegel, who is also helping, uh, well, who's also in the development team of the MD Benchmark software. And I would like to acknowledge the Max Planck Society for funding and also the Max Planck Computing and Data Facility for their help and access to the clusters. And uh, just to mention, our code is available on GitHub. So it's uh, github.com slash bio minus this slash MD Benchmark. You can find a, a readme and uh, several links there. Also some quick installation guides, or if you want to dive into all the fine details about it, you can also just head over to our homepage with the documentation, docs.mdbenchmark.org. And with this, I'd like to thank you all for your attention and uh, would like, if you have any questions, I'm free to answer those. Thanks. Thank you very much indeed. Um, that's a really interesting talk, uh, and I think that looks like a really nice, nice tool. So uh, I'm happy to take questions from the floor if anyone has any questions about the tool. Um, 
while those questions are coming in, I guess I can I can make a start. Um, just yeah. uh, out of interest, you, you mentioned the, the Slurm load leveler, those queuing systems mm -hmm. that you, you do support. Um, yeah. How much effort is it to uh, support additional ones? Like for, I mean, I'm thinking of PBS, for example. I don't know if you've got any familiarity with that. Uh, um, I don't have any familiarity with that, but it's uh, basically none at all. We just, uh, it's a few lines of code. We just look for the executables, whether they're available. And if they are, then we just use those. So it's, uh, so if you, if, yeah, if there's any need for people to have any different queuing systems, uh, it's a no brainer to add these. But those were basically the free systems that are used on the clusters from our institute. And from the yep. society, so those were our first cases. Okay, good. Um, so I've got a, a question in here actually from Rossen uh, from mm -hmm. BioXL. Uh, Rossen's question was, uh, how difficult is it for users to add their own MD engine? So if a user wanted to extend the code, I know you mm -hmm. said you're very open to to doing mm -hmm. it yourself with things like NAMD and yeah. AMDA, but if somebody mm -hmm. wanted to to make the change themselves, uh, is the is the kind of ex, uh, documentation or an extensibility point or anything to so do that? there's in a sense there's no documentation about that because we're uh, actively hoping for people to get in touch with us uh, so that we can integrate those engines into the code by itself. Um, yeah. from, the, from the current way it's implemented, it's fairly straightforward. So there's, if you if you have a look at the GitHub page, there are a few ways of, um, well, no, there's not a few ways, there's a specific way of how you can add uh, uh, an engine, which basically requires MD Benchmark to know what kind of files are expected by the engine to run a simulation and also where to, where to find the performance results. More or less, mm -hmm. that's all. So it's fairly straightforward, even for people who have never never done any coding to uh, contribute in a sense. Yeah. So so if there's again, if anyone is interested in doing anything like that, we're uh, we're grateful for any any help. We can also guide people along to adding their own engines um, into the project, so that the whole community can can uh, profit from that. That's great. Yes, thank you. Um, I have another question, but I d uh, don't want to get in the way of the people from the floor. If uh, if anyone does have a question, do do type it in. Um, so the other thing I was going to ask uh, is the extent to. I mean, when you show some <laughs> when you show somebody something nice, it's always they always want they always want more. <laughs> and mm -hmm. So I was sort of interested, um, like you. The example there, the graphing and the analysis was based on mm -hmm. kind of single benchmark figure like nanoseconds per day. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to plot other things like the runtime or the speed up or the parallel efficiency, um, had you thought at all about incorporating other kind of metrics that could be plotted for performance? Um, it's a very good question. Actually, we have not yet. So. Uh, the only thing we have thought about was to uh, extend the plots with a few more informations about the different systems. So it would be maybe it would be interesting to know whether the system was a fully soluble system or in biological applications there could be membranes which could slow down the benchmarks and explain the poor performances. Um, we have not thought about any other different ways of plotting results. No, but. It's actually a fairly good point, I think. So that's something to think about. Yeah. Cool. And related to that as well, um, mm -hmm. one one piece of functionality I thought would be uh, nice, um, instead mm -hmm. of having a sort of li linear increase in the number of nodes, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six, I think it's quite common to do scalability tests where you look at one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. Mm -hmm. um, so either having an op option for the, that kind of doubling each time or uh, either an option to type in, you know, which, which sizes you want. Yeah. yeah. We, and it, um, then I think that would be, that would be quite a nice feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this is something that we also could add. Yeah. That, that's good. Yeah, this, uh, these are the small things that we haven't thought about yet. These are 
that was something that I that I tried for the uh, plotting, uh, where I tried to come up with use cases of options that people might want to have. For example, changing whether you want to have the fit or you don't want to have it, so that it's as easy as possible to just generate something. And I guess that also goes in the same direction of, of having having an option to to specify step size. Yeah. yeah. So the, the step size is interesting for the plotting, but also in terms of not yeah know, yeah, yeah sure no, no. Of, yeah for the, not wasting the runs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So. And, um, yeah, no, I think because I can definitely see the the, the real value in in a tool like this. So um, I wanted to wish you the best of luck in, in continuing to develop it, and uh, thank you very much for presenting it to us here today. Um, I don't think we have any other questions from the floor. Uh, if anyone does uh, think of a question they want to ask later, or if indeed you're watching this uh, video on YouTube and you have a question, uh, we have the BioXL forums at ask.bioxcel.eu, so you can uh, start another question there. Um, and uh, if one of us from BioXL uh, spots your question, we can pass that back to to Michael to, to follow up on. Um, so uh, if we don't have any other questions today, uh, I'd like to, to thank our speaker one last time, and uh, we will hopefully see you again for the next BioXL webinar very soon. So keep an eye on our website and you will see when that is. Thank you all very much for coming along and we will speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you.